Hi, I'm Alex Cologne, this is Sasha Segan, and you are watching One Cool Thing. This is PC Mag's show, where we show you one of the cool things that we've been working on, that we've been reviewing. Um, and this is one very cool thing, the Amazon Echo Spot, that you are currently in the process of reviewing as we speak. Yes, uh, and I mean, this is, you could say this is the last cool thing of 2017. This is, this is the culmination of our whole year, the coolest thing. Right, so next next week when pretty much everyone is out of the office, we are going to be showing you some of our favorite cool things that we've done in the past, but this is the last new cool thing that you will see until 2018. So if you are watching this now live on Facebook, uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments and we'll read them out and answer the questions for you. If you're watching this later on YouTube, please like and subscribe and let's just get right to the cool thing. Yeah, and it really is cool. Um, I've reviewed all of the Amazon Echo Alexa products and I really like the Echo Spot. I mean, in terms of a smart alarm clock or a smart baby mm. monitor, right? Uh, this it's it's really ideal. It's really adorable. Let me let me show you some of the basic design and the features, and then we'll we'll get to talking about how it works uh, in in real life use. Okay. So we have a two and a half inch color screen here. Uh, it's uh, 480 by 480. It has an ambient light sensor, so it gets dim if you're in a dark room, which is really important for an alarm clock. Right. On the top, there's uh, there are volume buttons. Now, there's a camera up here, but this mic mute button will turn off both the mic and the camera. And you can also say turn the camera off, so that uh, I know a lot of people are uncomfortable having a camera by their bed. Right. Uh, you can put tape over the camera, you can use the button, you can disable it by software, there's various ways. On the back here, we have a three and a half millimeter out. This is on uh, a lot of uh, recent Amazon products. It's great because it lets you hook up your Alexa powered device to more powerful speakers. And then on the bottom, we have uh, a 1.4 inch speaker. Uh, in my experience, it's not that loud. It's a little bit louder than the Echo Dot, right. uh, but uh, it's significantly clearer. It doesn't sound nearly as tinny or transistory as the Echo Dot. Uh, should I play a song? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, Alexa, play California by Grimes. Playing California from your library. Also, we should note, right now you have it set to top volume. Yeah, this is top volume, and it is not that much volume. I mean, it is, uh, it's alarm clock volume. Right. And as you can tell, we're not getting a ton of bass here. It's a tiny little tinny speaker, but it's not nearly as bad as the Echo Dot is. Alexa, stop. So you're not buying this for the audio quality. No, no, you're buying it for the convenience and you're buying it for, I mean, as one of the two Echoes that has a screen and the fact that the screen defaults to this clock face, uh, you're buying it to function as a clock to some extent. Right. And now let me show you about the clock faces here. Now they have definitely thought through how you're gonna use it as a clock. And uh, you have six analog clock faces. Okay, and then you have six digital clock faces, and you can also use your own. Uh, you can also use your own photo as a clock face. So you've got a bunch of clock face options. You have uh, more than a dozen options of sounds to wake up to, or you could also ask for uh, your alarm to be any song that is on any of your connected streaming services mm -hmm. or in your personal Amazon Music account. Um, let's talk a little bit about the physical controls that I see on the top. Mm -hmm. um, so where do we, we just have volume and mute? Yeah, yeah, it's just volume and mute on the top. Um, when the alarm goes off, if you poke the screen, it'll do a nine minute uh, snooze. Okay. And then if you swipe up on the screen, it'll dismiss the alarm. Got it. And uh, if even the dimmest light setting is too bright for your room, if you like to sleep in complete darkness, right. you, can set, you can tell Alexa to turn off the screen, but, uh, and let's see if she'll do that. No, okay, she did realize that isn't a command, that's good. Um, but then, uh, yeah, so you can, you can tell her to turn off the screen. So this is the default screen right now. Yeah, yeah, so um, by default, you get the clock, and then if you swipe to the right, you get weather, and that's mm -hmm. really useful when you're waking up in the morning. Right. And then if you swipe to the right again, you get some suggestions about things to do with Alexa. 
And then if you swipe to the right again, there's something which I turned off, which is trending topics, mm -hmm. which is horrible BS clickbait news things that Alexa pulled out of some garbage can somewhere. Uh, so if you did want to further go into one of those topics, though, do you just tap the screen, or how, how do those work? Yeah, you tap the screen, and then it pulls up the article. Mm -hmm. um, so, so things you can use the screen for, right. that's a good point. Um, it'll play video from uh, from uh, Amazon streaming video. Okay. It'll play uh, movie trailers. Uh, some of the skills have video aspects, like uh, you can do CNN or Reuters. Mm -hmm. It will not play YouTube. Okay. It will not play Netflix. It will not play Hulu. Um, that's really frustrating. Um, so the, the video skills are relatively limited. Uh, but I will show you, and also it's a round screen, so the cropping gets really weird. Let me let me show you, uh, Alexa. Play a funny video. Here's the Cosby Show season five, episode twenty. <laughs> so first of all, it's giving me a it's giving me a sitcom from the 1980s. First of all, and that's a little weird. It's giving me a sitcom from the 1980s. It is also crop to heck. Right. Like this is the cropping to get it onto the circular screen makes it super weird. Here's here's one that I found extra weird. Um, Alexa, play the Infinity War movie trailer. Now this one, it's doing it in the there proper aspect ratio, but it is so rectangular on this round the screen yeah. that it is teeny, teeny, tiny. You're getting about two postage stamps <laughs> worth of <laughs> screen video, uh, here. video yeah. More. Okay, so here's something a little more useful. Um, Alexa, ask all recipes for a recipe for French onion soup. Searching for French onion soup. I've found hundreds of results. My recommendation is French onion soup gratiné recipe. It has 4.5 out of 5 stars with thousands of Alexa, reviews. Alexa, stop. So when you ask for a recipe... Goodbye. Goodbye. When you ask for a recipe, it'll give you the text of the recipe, mm -hmm. and as you step step by step through the recipe, it'll give you the text of each step with both text and audio. That said, the font is huge and weirdly justified, right. so it could be a better presentation. Right. Um, so, do you see, I mean, because you can watch video on this, do you think anyone's going to use it to watch video? I think people are going to use it to watch home security cameras and baby monitors. Mm -hmm. um, because this is Alexa, and because it plums into the whole Alexa smart home ecosystem, right. it will connect to your video doorbell, it'll connect to your Alexa-associated baby monitor. Right. Um, that's where you'll be using it to, that's, that's where I think you'll be using it for the video. You'll have it, for instance, if you have it in the kitchen as a kitchen clock or a kitchen Alexa device, and someone buzzes the doorbell, you'll be able to see who it is on this screen. Right. That's where it's helpful. Uh, let's pause to take a question. Why mm -hmm. not a switchable display on the Echo Spot that shifts between E-Link and LCD, LED, OLED, like the Pixel Key screens on the Notion Inc. Atom? I am completely confused about that question. Um, so first of all, uh, the... I'm, I'm just gonna grab on one thing I understand from that question, which is Notion Inc. Atom. Um, the Notion Inc. Atom was not a scalable product. The screen technology they used was too expensive and had too far too low uh, production yields. So uh, that product uh, actually could not scale in the marketplace. So if the, if the question is, why not use a different screen technology here, the answer is, this is the appropriate screen technology that Amazon could get at its price and scalability. Um, I'm also going to say for the size of it, you don't need the, the highest quality screen that you can get. I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice screen. It's a nice screen, absolutely. And also remember, this isn't a battery powered device. So screen uh, power consumption isn't really relevant. Right. You can use an energy hogging LCD screen because this thing is wired in all the time. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to worry about things like e-ink, which are mostly for uh, power consumption right. reasons. Uh, any more questions out there? Okay, so let me talk about this camera up here, mm -hmm. which is what uh, worries a lot of people about right. this device. Um, the purpose of the camera is uh, primarily for video chat. Uh, you can call phones using this. Uh, you can also video chat to other people with other Alexa, screen-enabled Alexa devices, or the Alexa app mm -hmm. on their phones. 
Um, the video chat works pretty mm -hmm. well over Wi-Fi. Um, but that said, the number one complaint I get about this, uh, or I've heard about this when I've, when I've talked to people about this product, right. is I don't want a camera in my bedroom. So um, one thing I did while I was testing it is I did cover the camera with a tiny spot of black tape. Mm -hmm. And uh, it did not have a negative effect on the device. I've seen people covering it with googly eyes. I think that's pretty witty. Right. I like that. Um, Amazon says that the camera is very near the ambient light sensor, mm -hmm. but if I use the appropriate size spot of black tape, right. uh, the screen did still get dimmer in a dim room, so the ambient light sensor still seemed to be active. Okay. That said, it would be nice if they offered a slightly less expensive version without a camera. Right, like maybe, I mean this is 130 maybe for like $99. I think at $99 this thing would just take off. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. This is 130 um, I wonder if they're just trying not to step on the $99 standard Echo. Echo. Right. Yeah, which doesn't have a screen, but does have better audio. So one thing that um, is kind of, I, we were talking about it before the show, uh, is figuring out where this fits into the whole sort of Echo product line. The Echo system, you could say? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, is it is it a competitor for the $100 Echo? Is it a competitor to the Echo Show, which is $100 more than this? Uh, what, what exactly is this? I think, I mean, what they're trying to do is they're trying to upsell people who would have bought an Echo Dot mm -hmm. for the kitchen or bedroom. Right. Because that's what we've recommended to a lot of people in the past. That's what a lot of people have done. They've taken, because an Echo is really about sound. Mm -hmm. An Echo is a bigger speaker right. that's meant to at least somewhat fill a room right. where you're going to be playing music on it a lot. Um, this is not going to do that for you. This is more like the Echo Dot, um, but it's much more expensive. But the Echo Dot works really poorly as an alarm clock if you don't sleep alone. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not, if, if you are part of a couple, um, you don't want to be making, you don't want to be saying things in the middle of the night if you want to check the time without waking up your significant other. Right. Whereas this works a lot better in that context. It's more, I can say it's more family friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like we have another question. Is there any way for it to access music from a local library of MP3s? No. But what it can do is it can access music that you have saved to your Amazon Music account. So it doesn't all need to be subscription music. Mm -hmm. It can just be music that you've uploaded, um, uh, music that you've uploaded uh, to Amazon's cloud. Now it does have Bluetooth, so you can you can you can push music to it from your phone via Bluetooth, but you can't for instance, request a specific song from a Bluetooth connected phone. Right. For that, you'd have to upload it to your Amazon Music account. Uh, but again, the sound quality is really not that great. I wouldn't want to use this as my, um, you know, dedicated speaker. I totally agree. Yeah, this is not, this is not a device that's supposed to be the speaker that you enjoy music on. Right. This is supposed to be a device that is uh, primarily a clock with some internet and audio functions that you use to control your smart home, mm -hmm. that you use to monitor your smart cameras, that sort of stuff. Uh, looks like we have another question. Someone wants to see the demo of uh, the camera. Um, I can't demo the camera because it requires someone be on the other end and I'm the only person. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, so I, there's no one I can call. Um, can, you, can you show what initiating a call would look like? Um, yeah, certainly. Uh, Alexa. Call Sasha Segan. Calling Sasha Segan. And now what it's doing right mm -hmm. now is it's calling the Alexa app on my phone. Mm -hmm. But I can't answer that call at the Wouldn't same time. Wouldn't it be time, crazy so. if you did answer it though? Yeah, I did that at one point, and uh, the and it starts doing uh, it starts doing cascading audio feedback. Oh, we I, meant, like, I meant like another Sasha. Oh yeah, if another Sasha answered it, yeah. <laughs> Well, there's, there's, I have, I have a story I can tell you offline about that. Okay. Um, let's take another question. Can it do audiobooks? Yes. So it can, it can read your, uh, well, it can read your Kindle books. Um, I don't believe it can read Audible books. Um, that's something that I still need to double check. Uh, but it can read your Kindle books out loud. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, let me think of a Kindle book I was reading. Um, here we go. Uh, Alexa, 
Read Wool by Hugh Howey. Getting a sample of wool from Audible. Oh, so it does do. This audio it is Audible. Okay. Just say, start an Audible trial. This is Audible. Audible Frontiers presents Wool. Omnibus Alexa, edition. stop. So yeah, it is Audible. It's not just the, the Kindle books. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so... So yeah, audiobooks not a problem here. It will read you to sleep with an audiobook if you if you so desire. Um, so basically, it does everything that all of the Echo speakers do. Oh dear, and it's it's gone rogue. No, okay, I stopped it. Uh -huh. It does it does the same thing as all the Echo speakers. It does the same thing as the Echo Show. Yeah, it's a it is a full it is a full first class citizen of the Echo Republic. Mm -hmm. um, it 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 does every it does everything that a first party Amazon speaker will do in a small convenient form factor. Right, uh, we have another question. So can it play Spotify music? Yes, it can play Spotify. Um, it can play Spotify just like every other Alexa speaker can. I am not a Spotify subscriber, so I do not have it set up with Spotify. I have it set up with Amazon Music. Another question. Is it Android based? What are the chances of developing apps for it? And Zero. Any chance of uh, third party add-ons? There will never be a third party Part, there will never be a third-party actual app for this device. It is a completely closed operating system. Um, however, there are tens of thousands of third-party Amazon skills. Right. And that's where you get the third-party ecosystem for this. It's all the cloud-based skills. So, for instance, when I want to call a Lyft or order from Domino's or ask it for Doctor Who trivia facts, these are all uh, skills that have been added to the open Amazon skill ecosystem. And uh, dozens, if not hundreds more, are being added every day. If you go on Amazon's website, you'll see a full list of these Alexa skills. And of course, this supports all of them. Uh, yeah, so you can think of the skills as apps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but, but the apps don't run locally. Right. They're cloud-based. Yeah, uh, we have another question. Could you plug it into the Google Home Max and use both assistants interchangeably? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I haven't tried that. Uh, that would cost you five hundred and twenty-nine dollars. Um, I, I would try that with a dot first. Um, let me think about that. Yeah, since the since the Home Max has a three point five millimeter in, this has an out, and this and the the Googles have an out. That that is compatible. I really wonder what would happen next week. Okay, when nobody's in the office next week. I'm gonna take an Echo Dot. I'm gonna go plug it into the Home Max. I'll see what happens. All right, maybe we will have another morning show then next week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another question. Do other brands have smart clocks or is this like the first of its kind? There's one other smart clock that really competes with this. It's by iHome. Um, iHome has a $149 Alexa powered smart clock. And uh, the advantage and disadvantage there is that, uh, so it is Alexa powered. Mm -hmm. It's much more of a traditional alarm clock uh, design with a time-only display, not this full LCD display. Yeah. Um, and uh, it does not have a camera. And so uh, in that case, if you are the kind of person who wants an Alexa-powered smart clock, but the camera freaks you out to such a profound level that even covering it with tape you know, will not satisfy you, then that seems to be where, where the iHome comes in iHome also has a dock for an Echo Dot that is also an alarm clock. It's a little kludgy to use. Um, it's $49. Your Echo Dot will probably cost you between $30 and $50. So that comes together as a little less expensive. Right. But once more, it doesn't have the beautiful LCD screen. All right, let's take yet another question. Has anyone PC Mag tried to jailbreak it and install Linux? No. So okay, so so a little thing about PC Mag, we we review a lot of products a year, um, and one of the things about the products we review, for better or for worse, is we do not try to break them, uh, because part of the deal is that we we don't keep these products. We almost always return them to the manufacturers, their loans, and part of that deal is that we are going to try to return them in as close to the condition we got them in as possible. Right. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, and how our relationship with Amazon would be if we sent them back a jailbroken Echo a, Spot. A completely, a completely software trashed Echo Spot. Yeah. yeah, no, it's it's a great idea, and it's definitely something that I hope people on XDA developers do. And if they do, send me the link, because I would love to read about it and maybe write an article about that. Uh, do we have any other questions? 
All right, so is there anything else that you want to point out? Or, I mean, I feel like that pretty much... Uh, yeah, I think up. we pretty much covered it. I mean, uh, the, the Echo Spot, I'm finishing writing the review now. It'll probably be up later today. Right. Um, it is... Uh, it's a little expensive. $129 is more than a lot of people expect to spend for an alarm clock. Right. That's really my only, uh, my only concern here. Um, eventually, it'll probably go down to $99, mm -hmm. but you know, not soon. Amazon tends to only uh, t tends to only discount these after a while. Um, but if you are all in with the Alexa ecosystem, if you have an Alexa home, basically, right, and you've been using Echo Dots or you've been considering using Echo Dots in places where you think, oh, it would be great to be able to see the time, you know, it would be able to, it would be great to be able to see my baby monitor. Um, this is a much better idea than the Echo Show for that. It's less expensive, it's cuter, um, it, uh, it's, it's, it's really the ideal smart alarm clock. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in. And uh, like I said, next week we are going to be running some of our favorite one cool things that we've seen this year. And we'll be back with some all new products starting in 2018. So thanks for watching this year and we will see you again soon.